In this video, you'll learn how to set up the ActiveCampaign Zapier integration so that you can sync data, actions, and events for contacts in ActiveCampaign with your other platforms in your tech stack and vice versa. I'm Jason, growth specialist at Wildmail, where we help make ActiveCampaign even better for Europe-based businesses. Let's dive in. So first, before we dive in and set up the Zapier ActiveCampaign integration, let's go over what Zapier actually is. So Zapier is a platform that allows you to automate workflows across thousands of apps. And as you can see here, it'll allow you to connect active campaign with thousands of the most popular apps uh, so that you can automate your work and have more time for what matters most. And there's no code required. So this is how you're going to integrate your different platforms so they can essentially talk to each other, pass data across uh, platforms. And you can see also there are webhooks and HTTPS modules. Uh, if you don't see your app inside of Active Campaign uh, inside of Zapier, then you can use these modules to connect with other platforms that have open APIs. So that's Zapier. You need a trigger. If this happens, then do this, uh, a trigger, and then following actions. So I'll go ahead and dive into Zapier now. There is a free and a paid plan. Uh, we use a paid plan. It allows for multi-step zaps, and it also allows you to use certain features like uh, Facebook ads, et cetera, that aren't available on the free plan. So for our example, I'm going to click create first and hit new zap. And you can see here, step one, we need a trigger. So if we go back to our steps, uh, you're going to create your Zapier account, choose free or paid. We'll most likely use paid, then connect your active campaign account. So we're back in Zapier. We're going to select active campaign for our trigger. And I'm going to show you two examples, creating a zap with active campaign as the step one trigger, and then creating a zap with another app as the trigger and causing something to happen inside active campaign. So first creating the zap with AC as the step one trigger, we have to connect our active campaign account. And first I'm going to choose the event. So in this case, these are all the different trigger events, things that can happen inside active campaign that will set off this series of events. I'm going to just use new automation webhook. You can see the description says it triggers when an automation sends out webhook data. And to add a webhook in Active Campaign, navigate to your automation section, add or edit in automation, and create a new webhook action. So that's exactly what we're going to do for this example. There are some other common events that you might use when a contact is updated, when they're added to a list, uh, when a tag is added or removed from contacts. Those are the most popular ones if we're not using a webhook. So let's go ahead with the webhook and hit continue. And here is where we're able to choose our active campaign accounts because it's already linked. Uh, for your case, you would have to link it from the start. If I go to connect a new account, just to show you this example, it's super simple. You need your API URL and your API key. And these are found in my settings and then in the developer tab. And I'll show you here inside active campaign. If I go to settings in the bottom left and go to developer, I'm not going to click it because we don't want to share our API key, uh, nor should you. It's, it's um, information that someone could use to um, mess with your accounts and your data. You don't want to share this, but right here inside de developer, you'll find both the uh, active campaign API and the URL. Pop those in and you'll be connected. So I'm going to choose our account here and hit continue. And now it says, we're listening, have your application send a request to the webhook URL and then test your trigger. So what we need to do is go into Active Campaign, as they mentioned. We'll go into our automations. We'll go to this one that I've already created, webhook test one. And when I go into webhook test one, I'm not starting with the trigger. We're just using this to send one contact through. We need to pass data for one contact at least uh, for Zapier to understand that it was correctly connected and configured. So it says click the plus button. Going to go to conditions and workflow and go down to the purple option here that says webhook. Now it says enter the URL to post to and Zapier gives us that right here. So it says to add it navigate, et cetera, and create a new webhook action, which we just did. We're going to copy this here. Okay, it says configure your application with this Zap's webhook URL. Each Zap webhook that you use uh, has a unique URL. So this is unique to this specific uh, instance here. We'll hit copy, go back into the automation and paste this in. 
and hit save. Okay, now we have this automation, webhook test one. Once you've done that, you can turn this one active. And now remember it says the zap is listening. So we have to have the application, which is active campaign, send a request to this webhook. And now we're going to go to our contacts and we're going to go to a test contact. I'll just go to mine here. I'll pull up that contact, scroll down to automations, hit add. And now you can search and find your webhook test. That, hit OK. And now I've been added to that automation with the webhook. So if I go back to Zapier, I can click test trigger. And it's going to find this here. We found an automation. It was found in your active campaign account, automation A. And you can see all of the data that we're able to pass from Active Campaign using that webhook URL from the contact in Active Campaign to any other app that we want. So, for example, let's say we want to send a message in our Slack channel when someone takes a specific action inside Active Campaign. So, I can hit continue. And now we have to choose the next step an action, which is an event as that performs after this trigger starts the zap. So, we'd find Slack. And we can choose send channel message, hit continue. Again, you'll have to set up uh, and connect your Slack account. We already have ours set up, but it works very similarly to the same way uh, as when you connected your active campaign account. Hit continue. And now we have to just set up this action. So we'll pick a channel. Let's use sales. And now here we can configure our message. Okay. So we can say, uh, in this case, let's say test, and you can also add in data. This is the, the key part about Zapier is we can pull data from one platform. So in this case, the trigger or active campaign. Uh, and we can use it in our other platforms in our tech stack. So I can put test, I can put hot lead, but I can also add in data from active campaign from this contact that's going through the webhook in the trigger. All of this data here we can use. We can use their tags, we can use their name, their email, etc. So I would use in this case, uh, if I'm setting up our message to go into the selection, let's just say test, and then we can add in uh, first name. Space, last name, enter, and we can add in their email as well. And then all of this information can be passed into Slack. So for this example, I'll just delete this. Uh, we'll just pass test, but know that this information uh, for the contact, it won't say contact first name. It'll say Jason Kane, and it'll say my email uh, would get passed into Slack as well. So if I go back to my automations. and I edit this automation just to demonstrate. I'm actually going to mark this as inactive. And for a start trigger, we can say score changes. Lead engagement scoring is above, let's say, 100, runs multiple times. You can check out this video to learn how lead scoring works inside Active Campaign. We'll hit add start. And then this way, when a contact score changes to above 100, we're going to trigger this zap here, which is going to let our sales team know uh, that we have a hot lead inbound. So send as a bot, yes. You can choose whatever you'd like for the bot name. You can choose whatever you'd like for the bot icon. Okay, we typically don't need to include a link to the zap, an image. Um, or anything else. So we can hit continue. And it says to test Slack, we need to create a new send channel message. And this is what will be created. Okay, so it lets you know the text is yes, it's set to send as a bot. And we can test the action. And it says a send channel message was sent to Slack. And if I pull up Slack, you can see this here test and it has the sent via 
uh, link as well. So you can go in and edit the Zap if needed, or you can remove this in the options. So that is how you set up the Active Campaign and Zapier integration. We go back over our steps. You connect Active Campaign. You can create a Zap with Active Campaign as a step one trigger. And then, of course, you can also create a Zap with another app as a step one trigger. If you're going to do that, uh, it's going to swap out this trigger for another app. Let's say you want to use Calendly. So every time someone books a call, we'll choose an event, invitee created. And you can see the description triggers when an invitee schedules an event. Hit continue. We can select our own uh, account or connect a new account. Hit continue. And as soon as this uh, is tested, we can choose our own account. You'll have to connect yours. Hit continue. You'll have to book a test call. Uh, this should already find one for hours because we've had multiple calls go through in the past. You can see we found an invitee and it was found in our Calendly account. Uh, this has all of the data from the person who booked the call, including the call times, etc. Hit continue. And in our example here, we can send a message to Slack and then we can also add the information from the person who booked the call into active campaign. So we can go ahead and create account, create or update a contact. This is typically the one that you will use. Hit continue. Choose your account. And then you'll be able to set up the action and you can assign and you can subscribe them to one of your lists. You can map the ID from you can subscribe them to one of your lists. You have to enter the email from Calendly. You can see this here. If this is not provided, email must be, and you won't have their active campaign ID uh, from Calendly, but you will have their email address. And so if active campaign finds this email address in your contacts already, it will just update the account instead of creating a new one. So you can add in their first name, their last name, phone number if you have it from the Calendly form. You can add tags to the new contact, fill in custom fields, and then you'll hit continue. And now every time someone books a call in Calendly, you're letting your team know in Slack that a call has been booked, and then you're creating or updating a contact in Active Campaign. So this is how you would connect Zapier with Active Campaign using Active Campaign as one of the action steps and a different app as the trigger. If you have any questions around setting up specific zaps for your business, just let us know in the comments below. We'd be happy to help you out.